Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Canine Clips, and this is Bosley, and Bosley is a Shih Tzu Havanese, and he's coming in here for a whole full groom today. So today we're going to trim him up with a number seven um, blade, and he's going to be getting a mohawk. And we're going to do some uh, rounded, shorter ears on him, and uh, he's going to get nice and cool for the summer. So he's been coming to me for a little bit, and... Um, He's a frequent flyer, so you can see he's not too overgrown, and uh, he's pretty relaxed here, but still a little nervous. So I'm going to start with his face, and um, go from there. Let him see a little bit. Oh, come on, buddy. I'll have to hold the top of his nose, because he likes to lift his face up, I guess. So I do have lots of videos I've recorded um, of various different groomings that I've done. So if you're interested in seeing that or even just some um, issues or medical issues that I see with ear infections and how to trim nails and little tips that I give, um, please subscribe to my channel um, so that you can view lots of those types of videos that I post. I do post videos every day of different dogs that I groom or different tips that I have that I see coming through my dog grooming business. I do do this full time. So I do have lots of dog clients coming through and lots of dog breeds, which I also do some highlights on them as well. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I'd appreciate it if you could please, please subscribe um, to see more videos like that. Let's raise that up a little. There we go. All right. So when I'm grooming the face, I always make sure um, I don't hold on to the throat area because I don't want to impact their breathing at all. So this guy, usually I hold on from the bottom, but because he keeps raising his head, I'm just kind of putting a little bit of pressure from the top so I can get in there. Like I said, we're going to be doing a mohawk on him today. He always gets his mohawk. So that will be nice. And it's a little warm outside there, so this will help cool him down as well. So in my first stage, I usually, I always do the, um, the face, um, trim around the face, and I do around the ears. So I'll pluck all the ears out as well and uh, the feet and nails before I give the bath. That way I can uh, you know, assess anything, if there's anything that needs to be done or have special attention to as well. Now I'm gonna pluck the ears and I just use regular tweezers. <laughs> He's just kind of relaxing there. It's just easily plucking out the hair. It actually, the ear inside, or the hair inside the ear canal actually comes out fairly easy. So it's quite easy to pluck out. Here, I'll go a little closer for you guys. And um, as long as you're plucking within the ear canal, it does actually come out quite easily. And that just helps... Um, alleviate some itchiness um, because when there is a lot of hair in there um, that allows the wax something to stick to so you may see your dog shaking his head a little bit more frequently than normal just because it's a little bit irritated from the wax and there generally isn't too much hair in there but just enough um, to cause some problems so you can see there was a little bit in there. Oh, and he's decided to have a nap. All right, so I'm done this year. As you can see, it's not too stressful for the dog. <laughs> and, and so we're going to do the other ear. I'm just going to turn him. Move 
do the same thing, just plucking out all the little hairs in there. And that just helps make it less itchy for him. stage I'll do is I'm going to trim up the feet and um, cut all the nails and then um, I will brush out his tail and his ears just to see if there's any mats or anything in them and uh, go from there. And then after that I do the bath and um, come back from that. So I'm just going to raise this up a little bit. There we go. You can see me doing his feet. And he's going to look at me and check me out. When I do the feet, I have, uh, I generally use scissors. There are some people that use uh, clippers to get in there. And I, I have tried just to see how it was. I'll do another video at some time where I just use clippers versus scissors um, and I, I've always used scissors so I guess maybe that's why I'm more comfortable with it but um, when I used the clippers <clears throat> they worked pretty good as well um, and I could get in there but um, dogs with sensitive feet didn't seem to like me getting and digging in there too much um, so I find that this is a little bit more relaxing for them when there's mats or they have sensitive feet so both methods are still good. You can still get the feet quite clean with the clippers. But I found that even with the clippers, I was always coming back and finishing up with the scissors. So you'll still need to be familiar with how to do the scissors in the feet as well. And my scissors are just starting to get dull. So I'll need to get them sharpened fairly soon. And that's basically when I do a, a snip and it doesn't go through the hair like I have to do a couple times to get it through which is okay if it's just here and there um, but if it continues to do that I'll switch out my scissors because we want to make sure they're sharp and then we can uh, get a nice quicker cut too because I don't really want to be worrying about my scissors when I'm trying to groom then that just takes up more time all right, so I'm going to do the nails here. And sometimes when the nails get a little bit longer, the feet are a little bit sore. So, and then you guys will do cough. So sometimes they can um, just show their displeasure for um, you trimming their nails, which is quite common. It doesn't mean they're getting hurt. Um, but, you know, it's probably irritating to them and not very comfortable getting them cut. Because their feet are sore. When their nails grow too much, their feet do get sore. And um, that's what causes when you're cutting them, you know, they may not like it very much. But uh, getting regular nail trimmings is, you know, good for your dog as well. Then their feet don't get sore. Um, they're not going to get overgrown on you and they just get used to it done. The dog's nail can usually be done once a month. I always use clippers as well, like when I'm trimming the nails. There are the grinders as well and if you're comfortable with that, you can do that regularly. Um, that would be almost once a week you do that. Um, but I find with the um, my clicker, clippers there, I'm able to trim off quite a bit more at one time. And to me, if the feet is already sore, I'm not going to want to put a grinder on it to wear it down to a healthy, healthy level. It'd be good to use a clipper first to trim off the bulk and then 
finish it up with the grinder if that's uh, your preference and then continue with the grinder from there and then you can keep them nice and healthy all right nail number two there we go done half buddy Okay, so we're going to do the other side. You can see I also don't do any use any restraints when I'm grooming. I never have used restraints, and uh, I just learned how to maneuver the dogs without um, having restraints and how to hold them if uh, they're being a little bit resistant. And I've found over the years, as I have become more and more confident and more experienced, the dogs um, do listen better as well. So they just kind of read off of you. So if you're nervous, they're kind of a little bit nervous. And um, But they do um, get better and better as you get more and more confident as well. And they'll just kind of know why they're there they need to get their grooming done so and as you get more and more experience it does get easier and easier but you are never going to be their favorite place to go and that's just something you have to realize they're, you're not the favorite person they want to see I do have a few rare dogs that really enjoy coming to the groomer, but um, they have really, really thick fur, and um, they love to get it trimmed off. They actually, when it grows too long, they actually pout and mope around the house for the owner um, because they're just uncomfortable, so they like their shorter hair. And uh, they start moping around the house and not eating as well, so it's signals to the owner that it's time to bring them in for their grooming, which is kind of funny, I think. But I guess they want to feel comfortable. All right, we're just about done the last foot here. Yeah, so I've got, like I mentioned before, I have quite a bit of videos that I've recorded of different groomings that I've done on different breeds. Um, also just specifics on how to trim the nails or clean the ears out. So I have little shorter videos on that as well. Um, and uh, if you're interested in any, learning anything more about dog grooming or any dog grooming tips about health, I do have quite a bit of videos uploaded already. And I do um, upload videos every day um, in the evening to add to my collection. So if you're interested in that, I'd appreciate if you'd subscribe to me and um, help build my channel up. And uh, you get to see lots more videos as I post them. And if there's anything specific you'd like to see, um, you can comment on any video and I'll be happy to put it on when I'm able to do so as um, I am doing this full time so eventually it'll come up I just don't know when but I do have like I said lots of videos to to choose from already that kind of cover the basics of everything but if there's any unique cuts that I do or unique dog breeds I like to showcase them as well. Um, Bosley's going to be the first dog of my videos that has a Mohawk. I do have a couple clients that get Mohawks, but it isn't actually that common. So um, it'll be nice to show Bosley with his nice Mohawk. All right, so we've done the, the face and the, the feet and nails and the ears so far. So now I'm just going to comb out the tail. And I do just use a metal comb. And I see that he has some mats in there, so I'm going to use my thinning shears to get those mats out. So I use my thumb to go to the base of the tail so I can just get underneath the mats, but I'm being, you know, aware of where his tail 
is as well, so I'm not cutting any skin. So I'm going to make a few cuts in a variety of places because he actually does have a few mats in here. And just to thin it out. And this allows me to keep the length of the tail, but just taking out some of the bulk um, and the mats so I can still comb through it now, hopefully and get through those mats and take them out. So we don't really want those in there. Oopsie. There we go. You like the camera. And uh, get through that. And then once I'm done getting all these mats out, then we'll have a bath and get all nice and clean and then I'll be able to do the clipper groom on him. And like I said before, we're going to do a number seven um, with uh, rounded ears and uh, shorter rounded ears and uh, the mohawk on there. So. All right, so that takes out quite, that's my second clump. And here's the first clump. Let's leave those up there so we can see how much we get out of this tail. Okay, so there we got the bulk out. And that's how much we took out of the tail um, with the mats, so. So the thinning shears really do come in handy for that. Um, and then it allows me to still have a nice fluffy tail at the end. So that's good as well. Okay, so now we're going to move over to the bath. I'm just going to grab a towel. So I just grabbed a towel there. And we are just going to move Bosley to the tub now. Come here. Okay. So there's my tub area. I do have a raised tub for the dogs. Okay, and I do have um, a shower head with a nice long hose. And I have my temperature of my water turned, um, set at a certain temperature so that I could just turn the water on full. And I don't have to worry about the dogs, um, the temperature of the water getting too hot for the dogs. is nice and then I use a, a concentrated shampoo which I mix or dilute with water it's a 50 to 1 concentration that's made out of uh, essential oil so I try to have it as uh, gentle on them as possible and then I just use um, it's a Heinz, um, I think, mustard bottle that I've gotten, and then a ketchup top, so that when I turn it over, it doesn't come off unless I squeeze it. And I've used these bottles for many, many years, and they've come in handy. It's nice to be able to mix my, uh, dilute my shampoo, and then I just hook them up on the wall. So they're out of the way when the dog is moving around sometimes. Make sure we get nice and in there. Get all the fur nice and clean so that it helps me, allow me to get a nice um, cleaner cut on him. Lathers up nicely. Okay, now we're time for the. Usually in the legs is where it's the most dirty, just because of where they're walking and how low they are to the ground, of course. So you always make sure you give them a good scrub in the legs. Alright, so now it's time to rinse them out. I 
and now always be careful not to directly put water in his ears. So usually I'll go from the top of the head so it kind of comes down the ears and down the face. So you don't want to get any water in the ears because that could cause an ear infection. So even if your dog likes to go swimming, um, obviously it's out of your control, but you can put an ear solution in there to help dry it out a little bit. kind of wring them out. In my tub I also have a, a drain uh, screen so that I can catch the hair that comes there so it won't clog my pipes up. So I always be uh, be cleaning that out during the what during the bath and shampoo. I just kind of try to wring them out a little bit before I get the towel. There we go. Okay, and now we're moving to the back to the table. There we go. Alright, well hopefully you got a, still a clear view on the camera there. I'll just kind of towel dry him off for a little bit. towel dry before I blow dry. Then I'll blow dry him, but I don't get him completely dry. I just dry him enough just so I can get the clippers in there. And then I do come back after the um, first initial cut and blow dry him again. And then I'll kind of fluff it up. And then I um, cut him once again just to clean up anything or get anything I may have missed as well. All right, so. There he is. So I'm going to turn on the blow dryer now. It's just going to get a little noisy for a little bit. majority of the moisture out of him and that will let me, uh, allow me to give his first start with his first groom. Let's go grab the clippers. Alright. 
All right, so we're going to start with the number seven, as I said, on the body. And um, to make the mohawk on the, on the head, I actually um, shave both sides of it with a number 10 so that it accentuates the mohawk a little bit more, too. So usually when I start, I start at the back of the head and work my way back from there. So. So like I said, the fur right now is a little bit down. So this is just going to take off all the bulk of the fur to get me closer to where I want to be. I find by doing uh, always a second uh, kind of clipping, it gets the fur, uh, it gets a nice cleaner cut for the dog. And then it helps some um, if I happen to miss anything on the first go around. This just leaves a little bit of fur, so it's not right down to the skin. See Bosley, my good boy. He just kind of lets me do what I gotta do. Like I said, he's uh, been coming quite regularly for a long time now, so he kind of knows what's going on and what needs to be done. This will keep him nice and cool for the summer. I'm running low on that time. Not maybe a couple more months left. Well, it'd still be nice, but it'll start cooling down a little bit. So generally my clients, they start growing out their dog's fur at that time. So I do slow down in the winter and fall months. When school gets started up as well, it's another time it slows down. So that's one thing in dog grooming. If I'm working from home here, I do have the ups and downs of with the people when they're available and what works for them. Sorry, my canvas has a mind of its own today. There we go. He doesn't have any mats in him, so he's really well, really well groomed. And like I said, he does come in regularly, so that helps catch any mats before they start. And with the using when he's damp as well, when grooming him, 
It uh, helps keep the clipper blades a little bit cooler as well through the grooming process. So I can continue grooming for a while, but you do want to check them regularly to make sure um, that they don't get too warm for them because you don't want the, the warm clippers uh, touching the dog's skin because it can burn them, cause some irritation. Blending the, the leg with the feet that I've already trimmed. have a little bit of a fatty deposit here under his arm. And I'll show you that a little bit better in a little bit once I get all the hair trimmed around it. And it is a little bit red. And then I'll get to that after we're done the grooming here and just show you that what a fatty deposit looks like a lot of the shih tzu breeds have um, some warts that come with them later on in age and um, all dogs well all dogs can get warts but i see them more predominantly in the, the bichon or shih tzu breeds but of course they all can come in any of the breeds, but more predominantly in those guys. And um, a lot of dogs also come with fatty deposits. So it's not necessarily any anything harmful to the dog, but uh, sometimes they can be, you know, a little bit lumpy bumpy and always can be a little bit concerned for that. Okay, I'm just gonna finish off the back part here. be able to do um, a blow dry again. And with the around inside the legs, I do go upwards, which makes it a bit shorter. Um, but I will also switch my blade here now to a number 10, which is a bit shorter. Um, and that just keeps those areas that are prone to uh, matting and also stuff sticking to them a little bit shorter. So as the body grows out, those areas are, are shorter and, and it'll help prevent anything from sticking to it or getting matted as it grows out. So usually I'll do the, the two front armpits. And under the belly there. As well. So then at least that no pee will kind of stick to this area because that's where he's obviously going to be more prone to it. And that just keeps them nice and clean for a long bit as well. Again, this is a number 10 blade. Right? Alright, so now I'm going to just 
trim the bum area. Usually I like to go a little bit up on the tail, but not too much again. So, because generally when that hair grows out, it curls down into the bum. So that if the dog is pooped, sometimes um, it can really uh, cause you know, a little bit of a dirty area there with stuff building up there. And there we go. So that kind of gives me the next stage of trimming everything up. And I'm just going to kind of clean off the table here. And then I'm going to give them another quick blow dry as well. This is so when I blow dry, the hair doesn't fly all over the place. All right, good boy. Okay, so now we're going to do the second blow dry. I'm just going to put my earmuffs on again. And give them another quick blow dry, which will kind of fluff up everything for me. And... Um, then I'll be able to do the, the final uh, cut on him. see he doesn't like the, the head and face being done too much so I don't um, put too much blow dryer in that area because I don't want the air to go directly in his ears as well um, which again can cause ear infections so we want to you know if he can let me I will do it but if he doesn't I'm not too concerned because I've already um, you know checked over the ears and stuff and made sure there's no mats. We've already done the inside of the ears um, and we've done the main in the face as well. So then I'll just be trimming it up um, and making that mohawk. So I, I leave that, I'll leave that to the end just so it can dry a little bit more as we groom the rest of the body. And then we'll come back to that at the end. All right, so switch back to my number seven blade. And we are going to work on the body again and make that my final cut now. And I'll lower this a little bit. Actually, I'll just raise the table. So I do have a table that. I can move up and down, which is very nice for, for grooming dogs. And so if I'm move, working on their feet, I can raise it up. And then if they like to lay down, you know, again, I can raise it up or down, just depending on where they are situated for me. And it helps me not have to bend over and get tucked in there. 
around in the back there. I'll have to come back with some scissors because it's still a little bit long in there. It's a little hard to get with the clippers, so with this clipper blade. And uh, with the second blow dryer, it really poofs out anything. And then uh, can let me see anything I may have missed. And the initial kind of trim. And it really will give me a nice clean look on the body for the dog. You're never going to get everything perfect. Because the dog's hair sometimes has some curls in it. But of course, it gives you a nice, generally clean look. Cools them down. And I've always used a uh, hand type blow, blow dry to de -groom or blow dry the dogs as well. I find it's a little less stressful if you're there with them during the process. And then plus I can uh, assess if they're getting uncomfortable or not. with the scissors as well. scissors. I'm just going to trim a little bit in here. Take that little bit longer hair out. And do the same on the other side. finish up the face area. Be nice if you could see the face. All right. Okay, so that's about what we want to do for the face. And then for the ears, we're going to do a longer or a shorter rounded cut. So basically, um, I use my thumb as a guide when I'm trimming around the ears. And I can see pretty clearly where the edge of his ear is as well. So I always lift it up generally so I can see better of where that edge of that ear is on that side. And then I'll use the my thumb as a guide on this side to kind of even it out the same. You want to make sure you know where that ear actually is. We'll do the same for this side.
we go. Okay, so now we're going to do the mohawk. So for this I use a number 10 blade. You can do it with a number 7 as well to match the body up. But usually I go one length shorter and then that just um, allows the mohawk to show for a lot longer on the dog. Um, because as it grows out obviously it doesn't turn, it doesn't stay as a mohawk because you have all the fur around it as well. All right, so I'm going to lower the table back down again so we can make sure we get a good view of me trimming the uh, mohawk. All right, so when I do the mohawk, you just kind of um, divide the hair a little bit and I use the number 10 clipper, as I said, and I'm just going to start from the back of the eye and go straight back. Just like that. I'll do that from the other side. And then I also um, trim down the side of the head as well. Just kind of blend it in with the other length. Okay, and I'll do that on the other side as well. And I like the number 10 as well because um, you don't want to catch any of those as well, which sometimes can happen with the longer blades. Okay, so that takes off the bulk again, and it kind of gives me a nice line to uh, make his mohawk. So the mohawk is, uh, we don't want it too long because otherwise it won't stay up as well. So then you take the scissors, and just kind of trim off the bulk of it as well. We do want a mohawk that stands. So we have to make sure we get it a little bit thinned out. I don't use thinning shears, but I just take off the weight of it by taking some of the length off. You can see in here, there's some around his eyes, so I don't want that. So I do get in between his eyes quite short. And then at the end here, I'm just going to use some gel to uh, help it stay up for me. All right, so there is his beautiful mohawk. And I just put a little bit of gel on there. Make sure I get it in there. The hair is a little bit damp still, of course. That'll just help it to stay up for the owner. And then at that time when I'm in there, I can uh, see if any of it's kind of falling off. And there we go. I'll just kind of even out anything that's kind of gone down. Just having some renovations done, so a little knock in there. All right, and there we go. There is our boy. So he did really good. And uh, he's got a nice little mohawk. So he's a number seven cut with the mohawk there. And um, a little bit longer of the tail and the shorter rounded ears as well. So there is Bosley. Our nice little, um, nice little trim on him. And as I said, there is a, a fatty deposit on him. And he's under his armpit here, just a little bit. And he does have some redness as well. So it could be like a little rash that he's had. Um, sometimes they get them because of allergies as well. Shih Tzus are very prone to getting allergies later on when they get a little bit older. 
Um, so sometimes you just need to change out his um, food and uh, grab a food that doesn't have any chicken in it, um, which really helps him out. So um, we'll discuss that with the owner and um, hopefully that'll alleviate that. And uh, sometimes it's just because there's the fur's been long in there and they get uh, sweaty and stuff. So you can also see if that alleviates itself um, once he's home for a little bit after his nice trim here. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos of me grooming. And I'd really appreciate that. And um, I hope you uh, have a great day. And I appreciate you watching this video.